Well, fantastic. Um, welcome everyone to the July 2020 virtual field trip to Bath Nature Preserve. Uh, my name is Michelle Brocious. I'm a Western Chicago Audubon Society board member and field trip co-coordinator. Um, and I was thinking that since this is the very first virtual field trip we are doing, that I would take some time to explain what this is, what this virtual field trip is, um, and then we're going to, or I'm going to share with you a little bit about Bath Nature Preserve, a little bit about the target species that uh, we were looking for, and then uh, we're going to, I'm going to go through all of the contributions that were made to put this presentation together. And when I get to your slide, if you are present, uh, I will invite you to, if you want to share anything additional or I can cover the slide, uh, we're going to keep this really informal. So uh, what a virtual field trip is, is that every month the Western Chicago Audubon Society has selected a location to, to go and visit. So we ask, we invite people to any time from the first of the month to the last day of the month to go visit the location, look for the target species that were identified for you. If you don't find them, that's fine. Um, enjoy being out in nature and then report back to me anything of your experience. And this could be a bird tally list. Uh, this could be journaling photography, a poem, anything that you want to give to me. And if you are uncertain that something is suitable for a digital scrapbook, just reach out to me. I would love to find a way to incorporate anything that you have to give to me. So that is what we're doing. We had a handful of people that said, yes, I'll go to Bath Nature Preserve in July. Those people went and reported back to me certain items that I will share with you. I've compiled them into this digital scrapbook. And so hopefully this will almost feel like you went to Bath Nature Preserve yourself. So uh, Bath Nature Preserve is a 411 acre property owned and managed by Bath Township. The property was once part of Raymond's farm owned by the family of Marcel Raymond and the Raymond Firestone Estate, which was purchased on October 1997 by Bath Township. The preserve was open for public use in August of 2001. Um, you see a lovely photo that Tom Fishburn has provided um, of the Bath Nature Preserve signage there. And then I also included at the bottom of this slide a link to a really nice article that I found online by James F. McCarty. He, as a boy, knew the Raymond family and was allowed to visit the property when it was private and then went back again when it was a part of the preserve. And it's just, I, I, I felt it was a really nice article. Um, if anyone is interested in going back to this presentation for a deeper dive on your own, um, go ahead and do that. And Betsy will be providing this presentation online after, after today. So you will have access to go and do that. All right, so the, this acreage is a showcase of several environmental habitats, uh, wetlands, woodlands, prairie, riparian, and old field habitats, including a tamarack bog and multi-use trails for hiking, biking, nature, and equestrian all emphasizing limited intervention and minimal access to maintain ecological integrity throughout. And that was written by the Bath Business Association about um, the Bath Nature Preserve. And I thought that was a really nice summary of what you can find at the preserve. And again, a beautiful photo by Tom Fishburn of the grasslands at Bath Nature Preserve. And on the right-hand side there is a, a little bit of the bridal trail, uh, which is the trail that I happen to to hike when I went. All right, and also um, established in 1998 as a collaborative arrangement between the University of Akron and Bath Township, the mission of the University of Akron Field Station is to serve the needs of the people of Northeastern Ohio through research, education, and service that promotes a better understanding of our relationship with the natural environment. The goals of the station are to provide a center for long-term environmental research emphasizing habitat restoration and terrestrial ecology, 
to support the education programs of primarily urban universities and local schools, and three, to interact with the local community and promoting environmental awareness. Uh, so it's really cool that something like this is at Bath Nature Preserve. Um, as you can see, we have another photo uh, by Tom Fisher of the sign. Now this field station is located, if you turn into uh, the driveway of the preserve off of Ira Road, um, and you go all the way down, so you'll pass the first parking area, and you just keep going, and then there's a, a house at the very end, and that's where the field station is, and that's actually where I parked to have uh, easy access to the bridal trail where I hiked. All right, so a little bit about our target species. Uh, first was the tree swallow. Um, and according to the Cornell Lab of Ornithology, their description is a handsome aerialist with deep blue iridescent backs and clean white fronts. Tree swallows are a familiar sight in summer fields and wetlands across northern North America. They chase after flying insects with acrobatic twists and turns, their steely blue-green feathers flashing in the sunlight. Tree swallows nest in tree cavities. They also readily take up residence in nest boxes. This habit, or this habit has allowed scientists to study their breeding biology in detail and makes them a great addition to many a homeowner's yard or field. And uh, there are nesting boxes throughout Bath Nature Preserve, at least on the bridal trail where I hiked. I don't know exactly what species are intended for, probably maybe bluebird, but I know that tree swallows also nest there. Um, and then also the bobolink, uh, perched on a grass system, Perched on a grass stem or displaying in flight over a field, breeding male bobolinks are striking. No other northern American bird has a white back and black underparts. Some have described this look as wearing a tuxedo backwards. Added to this are the male's rich straw-colored patch on the head and his bubbling virtuosic song. A summer ends, as summer ends, he molts into a buff and brown female-like plumage. Though they're still fairly common in grasslands, bobolink numbers are declining. So that was our second bird that we were looking for. All right, so now we're going to dive into um, the, the contributions for this uh, scrapbook. Joanne and Terry Gorgeous went birding on Independence Day, and I thought that was so fun. Um, I, I included a little flag there. Um, with their list of um, species. They tally 32 species in all and they went. Uh, I'm, I'm happy that they went on Independence Day. I also like to enjoy my holiday birding. I just want to say that um, I'm, I'm lucky to have an uncle who also birds and so we always get together on holidays. When, you know, Christmas, Easter, Thanksgiving, we spend a day, extended family at my mom's house and my uncle and I will always sneak out a couple hours in the afternoon to go birding. So a really great way to spend a holiday. Um, and here, as reported, it was sunny, temperatures were going from 75 to 85 degrees, so a little a warm day, but not, not too bad. Um, as you can see here in this list, I have highlighted certain species in red. Those are just species that I was excited about. I've been birding for three years, so what is exciting to me might be different for someone who's been doing this for a while longer. Um, I, I always find it a pleasure to see a green heron. I don't see this too often. Red-shouldered hawk as well. Um, I highlighted the 18 tree swallows uh, because that was you know, one of our target species. Um, the Eastern bluebirds are always fun to see. And then the Orchard Oriole. I don't know if I've ever seen one. That might be a lifer for me if I ever, I'll have to check my eBird list um, and see if I've ever seen one of those. So 32 species is really good. Uh, I say that was successful holiday birding. Um, oh, and I should, I should ask, um, let's see, Joanne and Terry have not joined, so, um, We'll just move on. Marianne and John Henderson um, got 35 species on July 15th. Uh, when they went birding, temps ranged from 59 degrees on arrival to 86 on departure. Uh, plentiful milkweed spotted several beautiful butterflies, including two monarchs. Um, they didn't say they had, they had no COVID concerns. They only saw a few other people on their, um, on their journey there. So I actually split 
their list into two pages. So we can have this beautiful photo here of the Little Flycatcher by Tom Fishburne, and that is, uh, they saw four of those on, on their their birding experience. They also saw chimney swift. I thought that was fun. And two barn swallows, which is, you know, the swallow, the chimney swifts and the barn swallows are in the same swallow family with the tree swallows. And then here their list continues. Um, notable that I, I found a couple of wood thrushes, field sparrow, swamp sparrow, rose breasted grosbeak, and indigo bunting. And here we have a picture of a field sparrow by Tom again. The next contribution we have is uh, from Alan Rand, 48 species, but this was over two trips. He was an overachiever. Um, he birded on July 4th, Independence Day, so another holiday birder. I love it. And then July 19th, uh, he says these virtual field trips are a good idea. They get me to new places, and that is wonderful. Um, that's what we're really hoping for here is to get people to new places, explore what's around you, and hopefully get to see some new birds. So that's great. Uh, again, he saw a green heron, a cooper's hawk, uh, which I haven't seen in a while, a tree swallow and barn swallow. And then on the next page, he got a lifer, a Henslow sparrow. So congratulations to Al. That's wonderful. Um, and you know, as you all are going through these virtual field trips, if you decide to go location, report back to me. If you see a lifer, let me know because I will give you this award um, on the, in the digital scrapbook. So he also saw brown thrasher, eastern bluebirds, scarlet tanager, and indigo bunting, in addition to the Hensel sparrow. So that was a really good list. Now we get to me. I went. Um, I went on July 25th, and there were actually a few of us that went on the same day. And uh, I saw Tom there, Tom Fishburn, as as we were leaving, and Nancy, I believe, went on the same day. And I didn't. I didn't. We didn't run into each other. Um, I think we took different trails, so that's okay. Um, so I visited on July 25th. It was a bright, sunny morning, and the birds and cicadas were very vocal. That's something as soon as I stepped out of the car, it was deafening um, with all the noise and activity, and I loved it. Um, I parked at the University of Akron Field Station for easy access to the bridal trail and walked the entire loop, only leaving the trail to enjoy a short jaunt through the Tamarack Bog. Uh, and as you can see, the picture on the right uh, is the signage for the Tamarack Trail. And the first paragraph there just says the, the stay on the boardwalk. Um, but then it says restoration of Tamarack Bog began in 2013 when funding became available from a developer to mitigate wetlands within the Chicago watershed under the direction of the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers and the Ohio EPA. The University of Akron will be conducting research and monitoring the restoration through 2023. So that's that's great. It, it really is a nice little um, nice little excursion, and, and it was a nice relief because the bridal trail was a lot of times just indirect sun. So to go in here, it was a little cooler. It was it was the perfect um, reprieve from that. So I notable birds that I saw included tree swallows, an eastern bluebird with a tender morsel, song sparrows, and a brown thrasher. I also snapped a photo of a monarch butterfly. I'm not going to say how how many species I tallied because you know I've only been inverting for three years now, and it was not in comparison to the other list here. We got ten, <laughs> but I had fun. And so here's my eastern bluebird. As you can see, it's got a grub, um, and that's actually the same bird. He kept flying, you know, from that tree down to the uh, nesting box there, and then he would leave. And he with the and I think I've made, I was on the trail, but probably standing a little too close to the box for his comfort because he kept looking at me, and then he'd fly away. And I snapped my pictures, and then I, I let him continue with his business or her business. I guess I don't know. Um, and then here are two different song sparrows. And then my brown thrasher on the left there and the monarch butterfly on the right. And I was disappointed I didn't get a better photo of the brown thrasher, but a jogger came through and totally scared him, so I got what I got. <laughs> Sometimes that happens. Have to share the park. Um, and Nancy is next. So Nancy, I know you're on the line. Do you want to read or do you want me to read your um, journal entry? 
Oh, I don't know if I'll read it word for word, but uh, okay. but I thought July 25th was uh, Christmas in July. So another and I thought this, yep, yep. <laughs> uh, and I thought this was a great idea because it had been many many years, embarrassingly, since I had been out to Bath Nature Preserve. Didn't really know the trails very well, but again, there was a really nice little little map that you could carry along with you that showed the bridal trails, the the uh, hiking trails, the paved trails, that kind of thing. So it was so it was really really nice. And you, as you can see, I took what was called the North Fork Trail, about one and a half miles. You know, there were a lot of people on the trails, but everybody was respectful, either having masks or staying. Uh, at least six feet away, um, and uh, some dog walkers as well too. So, uh, and then on the way back, I took a little bit of that North Fork Trail, and then wound up going on. It was a little trail that went along a, um, a, a stream, and I thought, oh, it'd be nice and cool in there because it was getting a little hot. And my pictures are not as nice as Michelle's and Tom's because I'm just taking it with my Zinke phone. Uh, uh, camera so but the 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 photo that was on the first on the, the slide previous slide is the north fork of yellow creek and it was there's a, a nice little bridge and it was just nice and cool N nothing real birdy there but i just thought it was a, a really pretty picture and early on i got the the, the spider webs in the in the field uh, with the backlighting from the from the sun coming up, um, my birds are just kind of all mixed in in the narrative. I didn't know. Did you make a list? Of I did. Yeah, your list is on. Um, oh, okay. Not the next page, but the page after. Okay. So, Alrighty. Then we have this one. Oh, goody! Somebody got a picture. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but the habitats there again: forest, field, shrubby areas provided, a, a, again, a real nice variety of birds. Uh, did not get tree swallow, but at the very end, just as I was getting back to my car in the field, very close to the parking lot by Ira, I heard this distinctive pink, 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 which is the call of a bobolink. And it was a, uh, a brown bird, so was it a male that had changed from his breeding plumage? Was it a female or was it a young bird? I don't know. Uh, oh, and on the trail, oh, the Creekside Trail, I found this patch of feathers on the ground. They were hawk feathers of some kind. I couldn't tell which hawk, but no, even even predators are subject to uh, to predation. So, mm -hmm. okay. Well, thank you very much, Nancy. Um, this was great. I, I felt like I was walking with you as I was reading through this. So this was wonderful exactly, you know, um, what helped this presentation come to life. So thank you very much. And here's your list. Oh, there's um, my list. Yeah, 44 species. Ooh, that's wonderful. Um, I highlight Chimney Swift, the pileated woodpecker. Um, I, you know, that's our icon, you know, at Western Chicago Audubon Society. Uh, the three barn swallow, swamp sparrow, and I, I highlighted that because I hardly ever see them or, you know, maybe I just, I can't tell the difference between <laughs> that and another sparrow, so I don't think I ever see them. Mm -hmm. um, the bobolink, fantastic, that was, you know, one of our target species. Baltimore oriole, rose-breasted grosbeak, and the indigo bunting. Um, I actually think our two target species, tree, tree swallow and bobolink, probably were better in June. Um, a few of them were still hanging around though in July, so that was good. Yeah, it was again. That was top. great fun. Oh yeah, yeah. Thank you. All right, so Tom, I don't know if um you got your audio working. If you want to say anything, but I'm more than happy to to take um everyone through your beautiful photos. If you can't come off mute, so I will just start talking. And if um, you want to come off mute and share anything, uh, feel free. Uh, so Tom visited the preserve also on July 25th uh, near, so he, we have here two um, insects, so near one of Bath Nature Preserve's ponds, this lady skimmer rested. It is designated as vulnerable in Ohio, so um, you know, that's a wonderful find and a beautiful photo. I love that you can even see the detail on the wings. Uh, that's just great. And then Anna Brown Belted Bumblebee was doing a chart. Oh, go ahead. 
Go ahead, Tom. Oh no, I think we lost him. I know. I was just going to say, I found out. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, I can. I could. Can you hear me? Yes. Um, I actually found out that Dragonfly is not is not really vulnerable. Oh, it's not. Okay. Okay. I can make that change. Uh -oh. um, so then, and uh, there's a brown belted bumblebee. I found out that. Yeah. I discovered that later. No, no problem. Not a problem. So two very beautiful photos. And then we have the birds. So uh, the Bath Nature Preserve is a good place to see Eastern bluebirds. And you know that I found that to be the truth. There were lots of them there. Um, and bobolinks. So Tom was able to find one and, and shoot this, this lovely photo. And this adult male bobolink was still showing its breeding plumage. And in Ohio, bobolinks are designated a species of concern as its breeding habitat has diminished. And that is the truth. <laughs> um, and then I love this. I, I got a kick out of the, and I don't know if I can pronounce that, Dolly, Dolly Chonics Orizivorous name for the bobolink and was tempted to say Gazoocite after it. So thank you, Tom, for the chuckle. <laughs> it is a very complicated scientific name for sure. And then uh, tamaracks are a northern tree and rare in Ohio. I, 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 have, I have fun with the scientific names. And... Yeah. So tamaracks are a northern tree and rare in Ohio, but found in some special habitats like bogs and fens. And I was excited to come across Allegheny monkey flower along the bog boardwalk. And I remember this tree. I remember seeing it and there was, um, a bird at the very top and I wasn't able to identify. I tried to take pictures of it, but it was just too far away. Um, but I, I do remember that tree specifically and I'm, I'm glad that to, to know that that's a tamarack tree um, and you know what the bong is named after. So thank you for that. I, I learned something when I, when I got your photographs. And then I loved this. So this male bronze copper was under undeterred by my presence. Usually butterflies fly away before I get a few pictures. There are other places. Go ahead. There, there were some other places in, in Ohio to see tamarack trees. Um, but uh, they're more of a northern species. Um, I happened to run into uh, Randy Mitchell, who's with the University of Akron. He's a PhD and, um, and is very much part of the studies um, at, at the bog. And I asked him how many tamarack trees were there, and he told me eight. Oh, okay. Excellent. Yeah, there All right, and I, I love this series here of the bronze copper. Um, it's a beautiful butterfly or moth, I can't tell. Um, and I, I remember you, you posted on Facebook that you had to walk away. Like it just, it didn't, it didn't leave. You, you took over 60 images and then you just had to, <laughs> to walk away and leave it there continuing its business, which is really rare. I have tried to take pictures of butterflies too and it's, it's hard. <laughs> They're usually on the move. Um, so that's really wonderful. And all right, and so that is it for the contributors. So big thank you to Tom, Joanne and Terry, Marianne and John, Nancy and Al for your contributions. You really helped make this scrapbook possible um, and really painted a beautiful picture of what it's like to visit Bath Township or Bath Nature Preserve in Bath Township. Um, and then I also want to thank Bath Township for providing us with the Bath Nature Preserve. And I put the address there in case if you know anyone present or anyone who sees this recording wants to go visit. Uh, I put that address right in my GPS and it took me right there. I had no difficulty getting there. Um, 
And so also please visit wcaudubon.org for more virtual field trip opportunities. Um, and that leads us to August. I just want to invite everyone to visit Nemesilla Reservoir uh, this month in August at dusk to see Purple Martins. Um, at dusk, they, they tend to fly over the water uh, in search of insects to, to feed upon. Um, so I thought that would be a, a really cool thing to go see. Uh, so if you're interested in that, please visit the wcautobahn.org website and register. We have a media release there to sign as well so that I can use your pictures and journaling or whatever else it is that you um, want to provide and then tune in um, in September for our call and you can see um, what you have contributed in the scrapbook. Um, and so with that, that's the end of the, the scrapbook, um, but I want to open it up if anyone else has anything they'd like to add. Um, you don't have to have visited Bath Nature Preserve uh, in July. It could have been any previous visit. Is there anything um, that you've ever seen there or any experience you've ever had that you would like to share? Um, please go ahead and take yourself off mute. I have a, first of all, Michelle, I want to thank you for this beautiful scrapbook you put together. And I really want to thank Tom and Nancy for coming to this virtual meetup and, and talking about their own experiences because I think it adds a, a richness to the um, whole experience. And I was very disappointed I didn't get to go because my, uh, my buddy had a stomach uh, virus that day so we decided no and we would have been there on the 25th like everybody else. Oh, that was the day. <laughs> um, but I really am glad I had this opportunity to come and listen to all of you and I hope as we do more of these that more people like Tom and, and Nancy and you that go uh, feel comfortable with coming and talking about their experiences because it just add something. And um, I, I figured out from uh, the conversation why it's called a tamarack bog because of the tamarack trees, uh, probably. But I also wanted to, oh my God, there's a hawk just outside my big window. <laughs> Anyway, Turn your um, computer around so we can see it. <laughs> anyway, uh, I wondered how far north, where are they usually found, the tamarack trees? Does anybody know or should I research that? <laughs> I'm going to the Google that right now and see if we can find an answer. I, I, I know okay. they're very common up in Canada. Uh, Michigan, you know, upper parts of Michigan, Wisconsin, Minnesota. Um, I'm not sure about like the the, the um, Appalachian Mountains. You know, wherever you have cooler climates, wet area, that, that that they tend to like that a little bit more. So yeah, we're kind of at the edge of the Tamarack Range, although you can plant one. They 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 do they do uh, grow well in. You know, in uh, in Ohio, I am going to go try to sneak up on this bird. <laughs> I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you, Nancy, um, for for knowing that. <laughs> um, this, uh, also, at our Council of Ohio Audubon Chapters chapter meeting last evening, we talked up these virtual field trips, and and you know how we how Michelle has created, hey, go on out any time during this month and bring back a bird list, photographs, blah, blah, blah. And then we invited people to other chapters to join us this evening. I'm sad to see only our own folks here. Um, but yeah, uh, the people at COAC were like, whoa, this is something. So yeah, we, we, we talked it up uh, last evening. And we had hoped that somebody else would join in. Yeah. yeah. From another chapter. Yeah. Uh, Rory, I'm talking about I'm talking about the Poac meeting last night and yeah. how we talked it up. Yeah. People people yeah. were totally yeah. impressed. 
Oh, they God. really well, were. You know, were really and hopefully, about the yeah, and hopefully, um, you know, they can always see the recording. This is our very first one, so I, you know, I, mm -hmm. I expect it to catch on, and you know, hopefully, we'll get more people who will enjoy it. Well, I missed the bird. As I oh. snuck up on him, I guess he saw my shadow or something, and <laughs> off he flew. <laughs> but that's the first one I've ever seen. So, it, at home here, I mean, that close. So, the other thing I I had a question about was, uh, let's see. And I think I I had to step away for a couple of minutes, and I I. You may have explained this, Michelle, but um, separators or I don't remember how it's ICP something raptors or something. Yeah, I thought I wrote it down, but I didn't. But yeah, you said it, they're called exhibitors. ACC IP. Yeah, yeah. What are they? Yeah, they're they're are they? they're hawks that are slender. Uh, they tend to be forest hawks and they hunt birds. So the Cooper's hawk and the sharp shinned hawk are two exhibitors. Tend to have shorter, stubbier wings, a longer tail for maneuverability, um, as opposed to a red tailed hawk that is built like a, a B 52 bomber, whereas the exhibitor is, is more like a, a fighter jet. Okay. All right. A sleeker body. Then. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or thoughts? Uh, Buster Vanish put up a note on I think it was Facebook today uh, about he and a friend going out to uh, Nimasilla oh, and you. totally got totally blown away by the Purple Martins there. So, oh, yeah. That's fantastic. That's good yeah. to hear. I'm glad that, um, but what, he went there uh, because of the field trip? I, no, I think he just went, he had a, I don't know if he knows about our field trips. So okay. If he does, you know, I, I certainly hope he'll share or maybe join in uh, in September. That would yeah. be nice. Yeah, that, that would be great. Um, that's fantastic. I mean, I'm glad to know either way that there's activity going on in the Missoula that, you know, the people that are signing up for this field trip will see something and um, enjoy their experience. So that's good to know. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you everyone for uh, joining me on this field trip virtually. Um, and I hope you all have a great evening and I hope to see you next time. Thank you. Thanks so much, Michelle. This is great. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Michelle. Thanks for your photos, Tom. Yeah. Oh, Tom, your photos are beautiful. Yeah. Love them. Thank fun. you, Michelle.